Hello Tufts, welcome to the second episode of TUTV Scope. Today, we will lead you through one of Tufts' cutting edge institutions, the Experimental College. Now, the X College has been around since the 60s when social activism was at its height, and since then has pushed the boundaries of the educational frontier. Since 1966, Tufts has been one of the first and only colleges to offer an experimental college curriculum. The college sprang from the alternative education movement in San Francisco and is one of its last remaining remnants. This college runs a great breadth of courses in subjects that do not traditionally fit into any other department. Its instructors come from all walks of life, from court judges to magazine executives to students like us. Some of the newest majors, like film and media studies, have their roots in the experimental college. You may have heard about it, you may have taken a course, or you may have even helped interview teachers for next year's courses. No matter how you've heard of it, it's undeniable that the X College has become an integral piece of Tufts campus life, encouraging generations of jumbos to take part in course material that would not be possible to find elsewhere. We sat down with students, teachers, and even the president of the X College to talk about the future of the college. Enjoy. Hi Tufts, I'm Renee Brody and today we're sitting down with Howard Wolf, director of the Tufts X College. Um, so to start off, can you just give us a quick summary of what the X College is and what it does? Sure. Uh, the X College has been around for 52 years now and our mission has stayed remarkably the same. In a nutshell, our job is to push the educational envelope for undergraduate education. Hi Tufts, my name is Akshat Rajan and I'm here today with Gina Sanders who is the managing partner of Advance. She's a Tufts alumni and she has recently taught a course at the experimental college called The Future of Magazines. Could you tell us a little bit more about your role at Advance? Sure, uh, I've been at Condé Nast for 28 years. I was the founding publisher of Teen Vogue, Lucky, um, and most recently was CEO of Fairchild, uh, which is the parent company of Women's Wear Daily and Style.com. And what was your experience like being a professor for the X College? Well, the course I was teaching was called The Future of Magazines, and unlike most courses, it started out um, with the premise that there is no real answer and there might be multiple answers that are valid. We looked at how challenges actually create opportunities such as media companies, magazine companies getting into television, feature film, um, webisodes, etc. We looked at how these developments have created new job opportunities and what those opportunities might be for students and then it concluded with each student presenting their magazine of the future. Hi, so today we have Sam Kitchens with us from the X College. Um, Sam, do you want to tell us about yourself, what you've done with the X College's classes that you taught? Right, so um, I'm a clinical psych major here at Tufts. Um, I'm also a film studies minor. Um, the, through the X College, I've taught two classes so far. Mm -hmm. uh, so one was a freshman, um, freshman class, um, you, you were in it, um, and the class I'm teaching this semester is a class open to anyone, I'm teaching it by myself, um, myself and the co-teacher co Rob, mm -hmm. um, we taught a class that took the genre of horror film and broke it into different styles mm -hmm. and um, techniques. Have you ever taken an ex-college course? Yes, I have. Oh, what was it on? It was on uh, breaking down the short film with a, a junior and a... Uh, sophomore. Was we this were, for yeah. the perspectives? Perspective class. Perspective. Yeah. Did you My first semester here? Nice. Did you? What did you get out of it? Do you think? I think I actually learned a lot in terms of like. First, I got to meet upperclassmen, which is pretty cool. I, they were became my friends, so like I could see them around and like say hi. And they also taught me a lot about like what Tufts has to offer in like short, making short films, nice. which I didn't know about. So. Um, so how are the X College courses selected? We have 144 actual applicants for next fall. This is for 22 positions. If an applicant isn't going to be able to communicate and, and excite the three people on the interview committee, they're not going to be able to deal with a whole semester. Yeah. And that's really what we're asking that committee to do. Take all that information and hammer it out and come up with 22 visiting lecture courses. I've been interviewing um, professionals uh, to teach for the you know, the actual lectures, not peer mm -hmm. lectures. And we assess the courses, you know, is this something that tough students are gonna take? Yeah. Um, is this something that's accessible to all tough students? So one of the questions I like to ask is, if an art student and a comp sci student walk into the class, are they both gonna be able to, like, 
engage yeah. in the same way. Have you ever taken an ex-college course? No, I have not. Why not? Well, so ex-college posts all their classes in the middle of summer, which means that it's really hard to take an ex-college class without, unless you plan ahead to classes that you can't possibly know about because they don't get posted until like three months after we choose our classes, which to me seems silly, but I guess there must be a reason for it. Would you take an ex-college course if that problem wasn't there? I would probably take six ex-college courses if that problem wasn't there. Uh, just because of the engineering curriculum, unfortunately there's not too much space. Would you like to take an ex-college course if you had the opportunity? Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. What, what appeals uh, to you about the ex-college? They're just like classes that are important but don't usually fit into the standard curriculum, so but still important to take. If those were to count towards your major and like you could incorporate that in some way, you would? 100%. No, I think, uh, I did think about that because there was actually, a, I had a bunch of friends in that class that like dropped it like a month in once they found out that it didn't count for anything and it counted for like half a credit. So it was kind of like off-putting because like, I am wasting my time, but I thought it was fun. So nice. I stick with it. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like unsettling that a lot of these classes that are really cool like don't count for anything. Right. Yeah. Um, I considered it first semester, and then my advisor told me it wouldn't fit into my schedule, uh, so I didn't. So if you had the opportunity to, you would, essentially? Yes. If it fit into my schedule and I could balance it with all my other work, I definitely would because they seem like very interesting courses outside normal curriculum. Well, it's going to be hard for us to find those magic hours when there's not something else. It's just facts of life at Tufts. Um, it might get better in the future if they move away from the block schedule and the credit system we have to something that's more standardized, which is a possibility they've been talking about it. But I don't see any, any real solution to that, unfortunately. You might not like the idea of distribution, but if you accept the logic behind it. And so what we've gone to instead is encouraging people, and it's in all the lists we put out, petition. The committee that's in charge of this is very open to having people petition for a particular course to work in their program. What do you have to say to people who perceive the classes as easy A's or even as a waste of time for people who are pursuing a certain field of study? The, the course that I always point to was a course a few years ago that was about um, law and media, okay? and and I had a student come in to me and say, it's the easiest course I ever took. I said, didn't you guys read like 600 pages in the law books? He said, yeah, but I loved it. It was easy. So what you're telling me was you loved it and it was fun. That's why you think it was easy, not that you didn't do any work. He said, yeah. And people work their tails off in our courses. It's people who don't take them that come up with that. But I guarantee people they'll work hard in next college courses, but they'll love them and so they'll feel like, wow, that was cool. I had a great time. So usually people take ex-college courses because they think that they, it's an easy way out, but did you think that the students were very committed to the class? Well, I think if they thought that, they were very quickly disavowed of that notion. Uh, it was not a traditional class, but I think it really pushed people and pushed them to think and learn and then test themselves in the final assignment. The ex-college, right from the beginning, was part of the, the Arts and Sciences Division. It was never seen as an alternative to the traditional curriculum. It was seen as an addition to the traditional curriculum. That was the biggest difference, and that's why we've survived. That was the genius of the, of the founders of the X College to realize that you could have an alternative if you thought about it as an addition and not as something that was, in some sense, critiquing the regular curriculum. The dance program started here. The Africana Studies program started here. Women's Studies started here. Peace and Justice started here. So the fact that we were considered part of the central mission of the college is what kept us going and, and keeps us alive now and keeps us very vital. And I took an ex-college course, which was on collage, and I remember studying about Kurt Witters and Marcel Duchamp. And I also remember walking through the streets of Cambridge collecting garbage to make my own ready-made art. Uh, 30 years later, I am now in the process of building a studio to create a multi-piece collage installation. I have not done this in 30 years, but it's been with me the whole time. And when the idea hit, I decided to do it. Within education, there's uh, the need to both learn things and then also learn how the world works. 
And I think what the ex-college does is it marries the two. I think in education and when you're in college, a lot of it is soaking in information that is given to you. Uh, and I think what we sought to do in this class, and I think it's part of the ex-college, is learning how to express you and how to find your own voice and then take that and make it successful. And I think what was so impressive to me about the presentations that I saw was that each student celebrated who they were through the learning in the class. So it, it was very structured, but each one was unique. And it's something I'll never forget. Thanks for watching this episode of TUTV Scope. And check out the X College's courses for the fall on the X College website.